Hi, this is Shadi and today I want to go back old school and talk about the 1964 Olympics in Tokyo where judo first participated in history. So we all know that you know judo went through a lot of quote unquote democratization in order to become this sport with federations and a very detailed system to it. And since we are closing in on 2020 where the Tokyo Olympics will be played this summer, I thought I'd go back and talk about the first Olympics where judo was a part of the Olympics. Um, we all know that before the 1950s it was an elitist practice, um, after that it was played into a system game and also you had the colored belts from Kawaishi in Europe particularly. It was actually the European that helped spread it throughout, um, not only just the Americas but the Europeans, specifically the French, uh, made judo into a very nice system, into federations, etc. It was far more understood, it has like a curriculum, it became like a system of education that was well detailed. It wasn't like the Japanese where you just come here, you train, you learn your techniques and after a certain time, you know, you become a black belt. It became, you have to pass exams, katas, uh, competition points, etc, etc. And it became far more available to the masses, not just for the elites. Um, so. The first one was very different from today's judo. It was only four categories, the lightweight, middleweight, heavyweight, and openweight, where, you know, anyone from any weight category can just sign in and uh, compete. Um, it wasn't like when you say openweight plus 100 kilos. No, you can be from any category, you just go in. If you are that confident going up against whomever, you just go in and compete so here before the games you can see they started with a demonstration this is clearly the nage no kata the first kata that you learn in order to get your black belt it has all the basics from ashiwaza teiwaza and koshiwaza so it was only four categories there were only 27 uh, nations and 72 competitors only uh, now we have hundreds we have all these different categories minus 60, 66, 73, 81, 90, 100 and plus 100. You also have the women's. The first Olympics did not have any women. Uh, so as you see, it was far different, far more, uh, you know, not going to say primal, but very like beginner almost like UFC 1 compared to UFC today, it's very different, far less competitors, the rules were different, etc, etc. Um, so the Japanese start, uh, decided that they want to start judo in the Olympics in Tokyo, so they waited till 1964. Um, the resume for uh, the medals were three gold medals for Japan and one silver. The one silver, they actually got it in the open category. And Netherlands, they only got one gold. It was Anton Giesink in the open category who beat the Japanese uh, Akio Kaminaga. So, you have the united team of Germany where the two Germanys, East and West, were united into one team. They won one silver and one bronze medal. Canada, one silver. Switzerland, one silver. Soviet Union, four bronze medal. And Australia won bronze medal, South Korea won bronze medal, and the, finally the United States won bronze medal, a total of 16 medals. So it's very interesting to go back and see how it used to be and uh, you know how unpopular it was back then. Again, like UFC one, where you only had you know Kimo and uh, Hoist Gracie. Uh, it was very, you know, there were no specific rules. Everyone was just, you know, beating any, anyone. Uh, it was very unorganized. Um, I wouldn't say the same for judo, obviously. Um, you have the, the mat etiquettes, etc. But, uh, you know, the rules were far different. A lot of things you could get away with, uh, you know, leg grabs, 
grabbing your pants, etc., etc., pistol grips, whatever. So, uh, it's nice to know that now we have far more categories and actually women can participate. Uh, but when it comes to the rules, uh, here's the thing. Yes, as a grappling art, for example, against other grapplers, when you take away the legs, etc., you make it, yes, uh, less efficient, but then you don't make it completely useless. Well, as I mentioned before, because it is constantly being tested, pressure tested, competitions uh, against uh, resisting opponents, etc., etc. So, it, you could argue that uh, back then it was better, sure, but look now, we have all these categories, you know, you have women, you have children, you have now the uh, cadet Olympics, uh, you have, you, you know, you can actually create a promising uh, future for someone before they become a pro. So it is far different. For example, Jessica Klimkate uh, participated in the Youth Olympics. She's actually a cadet world champion as well. Uh, this is the stuff that's actually good about evolving a sport, not just from the rules on the mat, but also making it available for any category, whether it is uh, gender, age, uh, etc. Now you have the uh, veterans also competing in world championships and you have the Paralympics. So I would say it has taken a good direction. Uh, leg grabbing, etc. We, we, we talked about it a million times already. Um, but in general, I think it's a good direction where judo is headed when it comes to diversity and inclusive uh, gameplay if you want uh, so this is a short video about the first olympics you know kind of the results uh, how when where it was played when it was played um, so it's nice to go back this year to the nippon budokan where the, we saw the world championship and actually uh, have another olympic in tokyo where judo first started this was shady and thank you for listening